Greetings and welcome back for another Music Theory Bite. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of how to take an atonal melodic dictation. If that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, then stick around because this is the video for you. Atonal melodic dictations are scary things for most students, but they don't need to be as scary as most people make them. That is, if you have a few strategies, you can get through it without too much difficulty. So I'm going to actually do a real atonal melodic dictation right in front of you while you're watching this video today. But before we do, let me talk about some of the strategies that I use. First, what I'm listening for when I listen to the, for the melodic dictation is I'm listening for connections, things that I hear that are affinities, things that I've heard before. So I'm listening for pitches that I've heard before, I'm listening for motives, I'm listening for anything that can help me get pieces of the dictation along the way. If I find that I can anchor myself with pitches in various places along the melody, then I can start to connect everything together. It's not a lot different than doing a tonal melodic dictation. And if you've seen my videos on that, you'll know that I have a process that I talk about for doing that. That is, first I set up my workspace, then I listen to the melody. And it's really, that's the most important step. Listen to the melody so you know what's in there and what the melody is telling you it needs to have done to it in order to write a successful melodic dictation. After that, I get big picture stuff, clef, meter, uh, modality, those sorts of things. Since this is atonal, don't have to worry about modality, but the clef and the meter, I do need to worry about. After that, then, I start listening for rhythm. I get the rhythm written down. I figure out where things happen before I figure out what happens in each of those places. After I've done that, then I start working on getting structural pitches along the way, which is pretty much what I'm going to do here, although my techniques for doing it are going to be a little bit different. In a tonal melodic dictation, of course, I'm listening for scale degrees, filling in one scale degree per measure. In an atonal one, I'm listening for connections to what I've heard before. Every atonal melody is different, so the connections could be very different. For example, it could be one that's based on an atonal set, in which case I'm listening for elements of that set. If it's a trichord, maybe there's a half step or whole step that keeps showing up in the, in the melody. So I'll be listening for those elements. I'm also going to be listening for proximal pitches. Pitches that are related to or the same as pitches that I've heard before. So if I hear a particular pitch and then three measures later I hear the same pitch, if I can make that connection that gives me something to anchor in a little bit later on in the melody. I can also anchor to things that I've heard before uh, from one hearing to the next. So for example, I can take the last pitch that I hear and try to relate it to the first pitch of the melody based on either remembering it or holding on to that last pitch until I hear the melody again. Finally, I will be listening for moments of tonality that I might hear. Uh, those sorts of things can help me out. If I hear a particular thing that sounds like it's tonal in a particular key, I might be able to use that. And one last thing, I forgot about this one, I will be listening for intervals when all the other things start to fail me, then I'm going to be double checking, listening for the integrity of intervals along the way. Now I've picked out a melodic dictation that uh, I don't know, I wrote it actually several years ago, so it's one that I'm, I have a vague recollection of writing, but I actually don't know what's in the melody. So I have it on my computer loaded up ready to go. So let's see what happens. So the first step in taking any melodic dictation is, of course, setting up your workspace. So what I'm going to do is give myself plenty of empty measures on a nice clean sheet of manuscript. And then step two, just as we do with tonal melodic dictations, is to listen to the melody. Now you'll notice with an atonal melody, I usually give my students, I'm going to, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of additional information. You'll notice that I know the meter already because in an atonal context, we usually don't have anything that helps us figure out what the meter is. There's no harmonic progression that helps us to figure out what meter is underlying the whole thing. So I'll give myself a meter, and I'll also give myself a starting pitch. In this case, it's an A natural. So step two, I'm ready for it, ready to listen. Here's the melody. All right, so now step three, we're gonna get big picture stuff. So I'm gonna start by saying this sounds like it's kind of in the higher register. So we'll give ourselves treble clefs. And that tells me then that my starting pitch is 
that a natural <clears throat> right there. All right, so now I'm ready to move on to step four, which is figure out the rhythm. I'm going to do that by writing the rhythm as I listen to it again. So here we go. So I have <clears throat> just some figures written down up there that should help me translate this into traditional notation. So the first measure, I heard quarter, quarter, dotted quarter, eighth note, and then quarter, eighth quarter, followed by four quarters, and then probably whole note, maybe a dotted half note, doesn't really matter so much in this case. The second phrase and begins pretty much as the first phrase did, so we're going to use that same rhythm again. And second measure was the same also. And then the last measure, pretty much the same as what we had before. So my step four is now done. I now have a rhythm that <laughs> I can start to figure out wh what all the pitches are as I listen to it. So this part you'll notice is the same as what we would do for a normal tonal melodic dictation, if you've checked out my videos on taking tonal melodic dictations. Now, we have to start thinking in terms of what are the characteristics that make this uniquely atonal. And I'm gonna be listening for particular sounds. That is, the melody, if you listen to it carefully, will tell you what sorts of things to listen for. So for example, I heard an awful lot of half steps in there. I also heard a decent amount, number of tritones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find as many of those half steps as I can. I'm going to mark them on my rhythm chart. I don't know if I got all of them, but I got a bunch of them. And now, keeping in mind what the shape of the melody is, I should be able to figure out a decent number of things in here. So I know that my second pitch is a half step up. And I also know that if I skip this note, so that I'm now starting to think in terms of proximal pitches. So if I skip that second note, then I'll be looking at this pitch here, which sounded to me like it was the same as the first pitch. Notice how I'm putting an accidental on every single pitch that I write. That's sort of the tradition of what you do when writing a tonal melody. This was a half step, so I'm going to go ahead and write that in there. And let me think here just a second. I know here I had a half step down, but I don't know exactly what that nature of the half step was, so I don't have anything to anchor on there. So I'm going to hold off on that for just a second. Now, this here has the same shape as what we had at the beginning, but again, I don't know what pitches I start on, so I'm going to have to work, work on that later. So I've got a few things in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can connect anything else later in the melody to one of these pitches that I already know. So I'm going to be listening for those pitches as I move on through here. It's not terribly helpful, but I do know that this A flat returns right there. So I think what I'm going to have to do now is find something else. So if I focus it on the first three pitches, da -dum -bum. so here what I have is a tritone from that first pitch. In fact, I'm hearing a one of my atonal sets. That's a 3-5 trichord, 0-1-6. And what I've noticed from that is this E flat here that I just wrote seems to step down by half step there and then also step down by half step again here. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using the enharmonic equivalents for these pitches. If I used a C sharp there instead of a D flat, I would be just fine. 
All right, so I also had, I think I missed this when I uh, listened to it before. Uh, no, I, I think I got it there. All right, so then I heard that D flat came back again over here. So I'm using those proximal pitches, and then I would have a C natural there. So I'm starting to fill in a few things along the way. Now, I also heard that the third pitch, the long pitch in the second phrase here was, um, it's a pitch that I had heard before. So I, I'm thinking that's a D natural there. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in. And I don't think I have anything else. I guess this long note here, this half note here, sounds to me like it is a half step below there. So once again, I'm filling in things using pitches that I've heard before, proximal pitches, pitches that are right next to pitches that I've heard before. So I now have the entire first two measures. I have a pitch here that I don't know what it is. It's a high pitch here. And uh, so I'll have to figure that one out. I'll have to figure out the end of the first phrase. And then I have a bunch of work to do on the second phrase. So I'm going to go back and listen to it again and see if I can find anything else that helps me out in here. So a little trick that oftentimes we can use is hearing that last pitch, dum, and remembering our first pitch, bum, 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 bum. That's a perfect fifth away. So we're going to end a perfect fifth lower on a D natural right there, and write that in there. All right, now, I also noticed that this melody has, since it seems to be based on that 3-5 trichord, that zero one six sound, I'm going to hear some perfect fourths, perfect fifths, the first pitch, the last pitch, for example, but I'm also going to hear some tritones in there. And one of the tritones that I heard was this one right here, this tritone from the D flat to the G natural. And then I also heard another tritone right here that gets me to the end of the first phrase. So that gives me a little bit more to anchor on here. So now what I'm going to be listening for is how does this F sharp here relate to the first note of the second phrase? So just going off of memory here, what I heard was we step down by a whole step. It's a little bit of an uncharacteristic type of sound, and that is one of my half step sounds right there, the half step up. So I had that marked there. It's my half step. So I got that there. And once again, I hear the last pitch, the eighth note of this measure, as being the same pitch that started that measure. All right, so now I'm getting close. I actually have only one pitch left to go, and that is the fourth beat of that second to last measure. And as I take a look at it and think about, I actually have the first beat of that measure also. And that's one of my half steps there also. So this one has to be my E flat. And then I'm hearing this pitch is related to something that came in here. And I hear it as actually higher than this in E natural here. So I'm going to guess that that is an F natural that brings that whole thing to a close there. All right, so now I have pitches for everything written there. Now I'm on to proofreading. So I'm going to take a look at this. And I'm going to try to figure out what the thing should sound like with... Um, going by what I see on my page rather than what I hear. And it's looking pretty good. So let me play it again now and see if I have it correct. I think I have something that's pretty close, pretty close to correct. So I'm going to now double check my notation, make sure everything looks good. And I think I have a correct atonal melodic dictation in front of you. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you found the techniques that I used helpful for figuring out how you might do an atonal melodic dictation. Remember, it's all about finding those connections throughout the melody 
and trying to make those connections. Are there things that you keep hearing over and over again in the melody? Rhythms, motives, intervals, and are there pitches that are related to other pitches that you've heard before? If you can find those and then start to connect them together, then that makes doing a melodic dictation that much easier. So, if you found this helpful, please make sure you like it. Feel free to leave constructive comments below, and as always, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for the latest Music Theory Bites as they become available. Until next time. Thank you.